This one is on the Analemma. I know her very well. She is. Uh, <laughs> she's Anna not Lema. the best person in the world. I'm sorry. I. <laughs> Analemma isn't. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, that's not sad. the best person yeah, in the world. Got such potential. How long is a day? Uh, depends. Are my kids with me? Because then it's too long. <laughs> um, but 24 hours is what they say. 24 hours. Yeah. It's 24 hours. We could repeat that every day without, okay, that's fine. But suppose you were to use the sun to keep track of that. How about the time it takes the sun to get to its highest point in the sky each day? That ought to be 24 hours. Because every day the sun rises and it gets a high point sky and then it goes and it sets on the other side. All right. Right. Yeah. That ought to be 24 hours. Right. But it's not. Exactly. Damn daylight savings time. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> there are some days where the sun is early at its highest point in the sky relative to your clock. And sometimes it's late in right. the sky. You're thinking it would cross the highest point in the sky at 12, high noon, right? H high noon, All right. that's what they say. Sometimes it gets to high noon before noon comes. Mm. And sometimes it gets to high noon after noon comes. Sometimes the sun is fast, and sometimes the sun is slow. Now, of course, we're the ones in motion around the sun, so I shouldn't be sun-centering those sentences. Right. But just for now, that's what I'll do. And it could be by up to 15 minutes. Oh, too wow. fast or too slow relative to your 24 hour day. That's correct. Cool. All right. What that means is you can't really use the sun to tell you when noon is because the sun will be ahead of that or behind it. So if you're OK, plus or minus 15 minutes. Sure. Use oh. the sun. Sun is on CP time. Oh, CP time. Don't nice. go there. <laughs> that's, a, that's the sun. The sun is like, what you talking about? 15 minutes. That's <laughs> We're still good. <laughs> We're still on time. We're still We're good. Still on time. Fifteen minutes. <laughs> you, you really mad about fifteen? Come on, man. <laughs> Are you going to tell people what CP time is? Oh, I've, I'm, I'm, a, I'm. I don't want to, but I'm going to have to. But yeah, CP time. No, okay, no, how about this? No, don't do it. Just make people go to the the Urban Dictionary. Yeah, go to the Urban Dictionary and look up CP time. If you. Drew the shadow, the tip shadow of a stick in the ground, every day at 12 noon, the tip of that shadow will trace out a figure eight on the ground over the 365 days over of the, the year. year. There'll be four days where the sun hits 12 noon at the highest point in its arc. All the other days of the year, it's either before or after. That's the width of the eight tells you how much before and how much after 12 noon, the sun arrived at that point on the sky. Now, this sounds really obscure, doesn't it? But every single sundial ever made has a say, figure eight on it. I was going to say, but it, it sounds obscure now because we don't use the sun to tell time. But if you actually exactly. use the sun to tell time and you don't want to end up on CP sun time, then... <laughs> <laughs> so you would use the figure eight to adjust... Right. The fact for the fact that the sun was either slow or fast so that you'd get the proper time accurate to in, in about a minute or two. Damn. Uh, actually, I've, I've done this experiment. You get it to within a minute. That's a, a properly oriented sundial when corrected by this figure eight. It's that figure eight is called an analemma. That is the name of that figure eight. Uh, and so that so you might ask, how come the sun is not behaving? How come the sun's not behaving? Thank you, Chuck, because <laughs> they got nothing to do with the sun. It has to do with the fact that Earth's orbit around the sun is not a perfect circle. When we are closer to the sun, we are moving faster in our orbit. If we move faster in orbit than when we're farthest from the sun, we have to turn a little bit extra to complete the sun's journey from noon to noon because we moved in our orbit around the sun. So if we turn to exactly the right same direction, we're not going to see the sun anymore. We have to keep turning right. to compensate for that. And so these effects are not only because we're in motion around the sun, but because sometimes we're traveling faster and sometimes we're traveling slower. Those conspire to make a figure eight. 
And that figure eight is called an analemma. If you have old uh, cartographic maps of the world, like old globes, look in the South Pacific where they put, you know, the legend for distance and the compass rows and things. In there, you'll find an analemma typically. Now, that is something I'm going to be honest, had no, never heard of before. That, that until it even just existed. Now that it never, just that completely new. And it, but it makes perfect sense. And it's very important because, of course, if you want to keep time. And by the way, so it, it, let's go back to a perfectly circular orbit, which we don't have. You would get this adjustment anyway. Okay. So the, it takes 23 hours and 56 minutes for the Earth to rotate once on its axis. 56 minutes and four seconds to rotate once. Well, how come we a 24 hour clock? Because in that time we orbited the Earth and we have to turn four minutes extra to then see the sun back where it's supposed to be. So we say Earth rotates once in 24 hours. That is false. That has never been true. Earth faces the sun every 24 hours, turns back to the sun. With, a, with an aligned spot every 24 hours. And that has to be adjusted because sometimes we move faster in our orbit and sometimes we move slower. All of that's going on. That's crazy. And you just wake up, have breakfast, go to work and come home. There you go. Now you can have a true appreciation for your digital clock, people. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And, uh, and by the way, most ancient peoples knew about this. Because what else are you doing? They didn't have HBO, you know, Max at night. What else are you going to do at night? You're going to look up. Right. My God, do they ever play anything else on this channel? God. <laughs> on the Sky Channel. <laughs> the Sky Channel. Oh, by the way, December 21st in the Northern Hemisphere, first day of winter. Okay. Right. The arc that the sun takes across the sky is very low. In right. fact, it is the lowest arc of all arcs of every other day of the year. Okay. Okay. December 22nd, the path is a little higher in the sky. And this continues to June 21st, where the arc that the sun takes across the sky is at its highest. Okay. Right? This is part of the reason, like the primary reason, why it's warmer in the summer and colder in the winter. The sun is not very high and it's not up for very long. The ancients were very concerned about this. The ancient pagan cultures, very concerned about this because the sun is everything. It gives you warmth and, and, and your crops and your, right. and your, you know, your agriculture. So there's the sun getting a lower and lower arc in the sky. So around December 21st, it stops getting lower. The sun right. stops. Solstice. Yes. Sol is the sun. Stis is stopped. Armistice. You stop the arms. So it doesn't stop in the sky. The the, the trajectory, right. the daily trajectory across the sky doesn't get lower. But then they weren't sure of this. It took a couple of days to make sure. And when you can say, hey, it's on its way back up again, that would happen a few days later. Right. right Guess what day the, that happened on? Probably around, I don't know, the Christmas, you know, nice, right. nice Christmas. Okay. So, nice. so the huge celebrations. Yay! So now Christ, Christianity says... We we don't want you worshiping pagan gods. We want you worshiping Jesus. That's right. And so there was a swap. Uh, there was an adjustment. Uh, where are you going to put the birth of Jesus? Passages in the Bible, if, if taken literally for what they say, would put it in the spring, All right? Not in December. Yep. But that. But if you want to get as many converts as you can, you can't take away their holiday. That's because pagans know how to party. Pagans party, baby. You can't stop. The, you can't stop the pagan party. You can't stop With the, the pagan party. No, they got the There's bonfire, a bonfire and, and everything. Just drinking. And it's amazing. And they're like coming along, like, no, hey guys, by the way, you can't worship this anymore. And uh, there's this guy Jesus. You're gonna have to kind of worship him. Well, does he drink? Well, not really. I mean, he can change water into wine, but he's not a big drinker. Well, we don't. That's good. That's a start. That's, that's a start. But that's we, a start. Yeah. Uh, tell you what, tell you what, here's a compromise. How about you guys keep your party and we'll just celebrate him as a part of the party. We're good with that. Start yeah, the that, fire. That there, that, there, there it was. That's it. So that's basically the entire reason for, for the birth of Jesus be, and Christmas being December 25th. 
Yep. Because yep. that's when you assure the sun's uh, arc returns in the sky. So all of this is going on in the 24-hour day in the calendar and the 365 days of the year. That's all. That's awesome. Anyhow, there's your analemma for you. Analemma, baby. <laughs> Adam Lemon did right by you in the end, I think. All right, Chuck, we got to run. All right. <laughs> There's been another Star Talk explainer. This one on the Anna Lemon. Chuck, always good to have you. Always a pleasure. Neil deGrasse Tyson here, your personal astrophysicist. Keep looking up.